I guess the first two that come to my mind is just crazy fast. It's intense and abrupt. Hang on. <laughs> scary fast. Absolutely, scary fast. When you can get the thing up and spinning and literally just spin the tire all the way to the wall. Uh, you know, like it's, it'll spin the tire up to, I've, I've looked at data, it's like 110, 120 miles an hour. It's one, it wants to throw you off the back every time you're accelerating and then yeah, the brakes are so good on the bike that every time you're on the brakes, it wants to throw you back over the front. Well, you're on the gas very hard, and, you know, the trash control's getting in, it's getting a little bit sideways, you're leaving a big black mark behind you, um, but it's just feeling that power and letting that thing drift around and, and just staying on it the whole time is, is the funnest part here for me. Scott Mullen. I ride the number three Kawasaki ZX-10 for Sauhegan Valley Motorsports. My name is Dave Dayon. I ride the number 22 Kawasaki ZX-10R. Hi, I'm Roger Ely Jr. You can call me Jr. I ride a ZX-10 and the number is 82. My name is Eric Wood, and I ride the number five ZX10. Sports, fantastic. You know, there's so much to love about it. But when you try to harness 200 horsepower, you know, it's not just all the other skills. It's like there's a there's a thrill to it. You know, it, it, the bike is has the ability to spin and twitch and do all this, all this kind of stuff at almost any moment. And you've got to be on top of your game nearly 100% of the time. I, I love the challenge. It is incredibly fun and you get off the bike and you've got a smile on your face and some sweat almost every time. We have so much of the MotoGP and World Superbike trickle-down technology in these bikes that we can build now. Um, one of the coolest things is just how much stuff we can change, adjust, you know, to really build the bikes to adapt our riding styles. Prior to the ZX-10R, I used to ride uh, some SV650s. And to get the SV650 to you know, be competitive, you really have to build motors and they don't become as reliable. So um, you know, the last year that I rode on SV650, I think I did you know, at least four or five rebuilds on it that year. And I was just, just kind of tired of you know, doing more motor work than riding. So I started looking around and the ZX10R just seemed like a great fit. You know, SVM is obviously a Kawasaki dealer. So, you know, jumped on one of them and have really been loving it ever since. And you know, it's just uh, just a great bike that you just simply change your oil and go. I was actually given the opportunity to ride um, a Ducati, um, an R1. I didn't get to ride a Suzuki 1000, and then I got to ride a ZX10. And all the brands have so many amazing points to them. But the ZX-10 for the way I ride and my long torso and body, it just seemed more manageable for me. And uh, the bike is very forgiving. It's har harder to ride maybe, but according to some people that ride to R1, but this bike has always treated me very well. Also, there's a really good 
balanced chassis. I came off a, a ZX-6 and went to a ZX-10 and was shocked by how well it turned. I expected it a track like this, you know, it being so kind of small and tight and twisty, like older 1000s, they were, they're a beast to ride around here. There's certain ones, especially. Even the older ZX-10s, you get like the 06, 07s. Those things are like unwieldy beasts. Um, this thing was surprisingly not that way. Uh, it turned side to side literally every bit as good as my 600 did. It was like riding a 600 with 200 horsepower, which is quite a thrill. It's very fast when you first get on it, but then something happens and you just kind of click into it and then things actually kind of slow down, it feels like. Honestly, I was uh, pretty nervous making this switch. Um, going, and the biggest thing that made me nervous was uh, the horsepower difference, thinking that I'm gonna go from something that was about 75 horsepower to 200. Um, but, you know, the, once you kind of get over that fear and realize how rideable and tractable everything really is, um, the biggest difference other than that was kind of the weight difference in the size of the bike. The, the thousands are definitely a little bit heavier than the lightweight bikes, um, but it's, uh, you know, the, it's, it's actually more of a refined chassis, more of a refined motorcycle. It does things around this track and, and other tracks that none of the lightweights really can do. There was two thoughts that came to my mind was either I'll do good and love it or do very poorly and hate it and regret putting so much money into a passion or a hobby, if you will. You know, even on a 600, you know, mid-corner roll speed is really, really important. And on a small bike, mid-corner roll speed is everything. Um, it's kind of the opposite. On a ZX-10, I mean, you have to carry some roll speed, of course, but the drive is where it's at. You know, you've got a lot of horsepower, and I joke when I talk in the school sometimes about, you know, you want to use all the horsepower you paid for. And if you don't, then you're leaving some time on the table. So a ZX-10 or any other 1000 is literally all about getting off the corners, and that's where all the time is made. Yeah, so transitioning from an SV650 to a ZX-10R, you know, it took me, I'd say, at least the, the majority of the first year that I was on it to really, you know, feel comfortable on it. Um, you know, with a, with a lower horsepower bike, it's really about carrying, you know, more corner speed. And with this, it's really about getting the bike turned and upright as quickly as possible so you can get on the gas as hard as possible. Because, I mean, this, these things just have so much power. You know, that's the, the better option for going through a, a corner, I guess. It was a challenging bit for me for a while because I have a tendency to override the front of the bike and to ride to the middle of the corner harder. I'm a front end biased rider so it forced me to shift my my focus into something away from what's more natural to me into something that say well you know this may feel faster but the lap times show that when I put my focus on getting off the corner they're better. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's a pretty interesting ride. So it, yeah, it, it's, it's all about getting up on the center of the tire and, and using the horsepower that you paid for. That's, that's the entire difference. The spot that I actually like the most on the 1000 is exiting two. Uh, it's an area that I'm very comfortable with and I can put the throttle on the stop and I can feel the bike sliding sideways going down the back straight. And to me, it's really ex uh, exhilarating. I mean, the most fun is when you get it right, you know, coming on in the front straightaway and, and coming off the back straight, you know, uh, when you can get the thing up and spinning and literally just spin the tire all the way to the wall. Uh, you know, like it's, it'll spin the tire up to, I've, I've looked at data, it's like 110, 120 miles an hour. You still got 5% wheel slip going sometimes. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy how long it takes for it to catch up to itself. So um, I would say that's the most fun. Another spot that I really enjoy, honestly, is the front straight because you really can get a feel for how fast these things are and how short that front straight really becomes. And I've told several people, you know, one of the ways that, uh, or how this bike feels when you're riding it is one, it wants to throw you off the back every time you're accelerating and then hey, the brakes are so good on the bike that every time you're on the brakes, it wants to throw you back over the front. So it's one of those things that it's so cool to really try to find that balance and change your riding style and adapt to how the bike is. 
to me, I actually think, you know, turn four area is the funnest part on the ZX-10R. I mean, you, it's, it is a little bit scary on it, but it's, it's fun at the same time where you're on the gas very hard and you know the trash control is getting in it's getting a little bit sideways you're leaving a big black mark behind you um, but it's just feeling that power and letting that thing drift around and, and just staying on it the whole time is is the funnest part here for me i think another one of the areas that i actually really enjoy but is one of my biggest struggles around here is uh turn uh, three four going up the hill trying to find that right balance of letting the bike slide and keeping it controlled, but also getting a really good, strong drive up the hill is, is really challenging. The, the challenging part for me on this track, to be honest with you, is over the back section. Um, you've got so much lean angle back and forth with how the track rolls from turn six to turn nine. Um, you can't get the bike wide open. And, and it seems like 5% throttle has big consequences at that point. So you play a lot of games with the throttle valve and its relationship to your hand, because again, with these bikes that are ride by wire, what you do here doesn't necessarily relate to what happens at the fuel injectors, you know, is a, a graph. And so you play games in the gears that you, that you are up there. I think for me, the, the biggest area that I struggle with on the bike is um, the turn 12 area. So the chicane and then flicking into turn 12. Um, you know, being a big bike, I, I kind of get late in that area, I feel. And then you got the big bump in turn 10, turn 12. And just getting the bike through that area and on the gas as hard as possible is the area that I struggle with the most. The hardest part about this track, for me, I would say probably turn three and four just because there's so many different styles of transitions and uh, just being able to trust yourself and trust the bike that you're not going to wick the throttle and high side or put too much bar input and just be a knucklehead. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean the four, the turn four area, it's it's definitely, you know, like I said, you're on the gas through there very hard and I've high sided myself in that same area as well, so it's it's definitely easy enough to do. You know, it can be as simple as just, you know, your body position is slightly off of where it should be and, you know, it doesn't take much and all of a sudden, you, you know, you're getting thrown off to the moon on the bike, so. So it was Eric up front and it was Shane Narbonne and Scott Mullen. And from what I could see, because when I was starting to go into the Apex of four, I saw Eric's bike flipping all over the place and uh, Scott and Shane took the best of the 50-50 chance and they went one direction and I went the other direction yeah, oh, absolutely. I had a pretty good uh, front row seat to, uh, to that uh, crash in four. Um, one of the things that we're always trying to constantly find with these bikes is to find that limit of traction with using the least amount of rider aids and traction control that these bikes have. You know, when you first start riding these bikes, you think, all right, great, I have traction control, wheelie control, I have all these aids that's really going to make the bike easier to ride. Um, but all of that actually slows you down. It slows down acceleration. So as we're trying to push these things and go faster and faster and faster, we start to take that stuff away because the bike starts to feel too slow. So things like that absolutely do happen as, you know, as we're pushing each other and we're trying to figure out those little bits of where you know, one of us is going to be faster than the other or one of us is going to be able to get a better drive because we're not going to have the uh, traction control kicking in and uh, unfortunately it was a slight mistake that happened and thankfully everybody's okay from that but uh, yeah, it still happens, still happens with everything that we have on these. You know, hindsight being 2020, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't have gone as blindly fast as I did. I mean, I, I my throttle graph, if you want to call it there, that rate was probably 30 or 40 percent stronger than it normally was. And we had made some improvements, which I was excited about, but I had probably been able to justify about 20 percent more throttle and I took 40. And the bike let me know that wasn't okay. And, you know, luckily I wasn't, you know, too hurt and the, we were able to place the bike back together and ride it again, you know, the next day. And so, 
yeah, all in all, uh, not too bad. But, uh, you know, it, it will force you to respect it, whether you do or not, sometimes, you know. Yeah, the bike definitely uh, started right off the showroom floor. Um, but we have, even though it's a super stock or super sport build, um, it is a... Uh, Everything has been changed. We've changed suspension, we've changed chassis geometry, um, we've changed obviously intake and exhaust stuff. We uh, have changed all of the electronics and the ECU and, and the harness and, uh, and then obviously body work and everything as well. So the only thing still remaining stock is pretty much the motor and the frame. So my motor is actually, it's a stock motor. This The engine case on this bike hasn't been opened up whatsoever, which is one of the things that I like most about it you don't really you don't need to build the motor you know it's perfectly capable for any track around this area um, so it's it's completely stock you know just simple air filter and stuff like that and exhaust and go you know some engine tuning and that's it the bike for the most part is um, pretty stock my other bike had more done it had um, cams had a thinner head gasket, had you know zero gap spark plugs, had just some other small modifications done to the motor, but not anything crazy. Um, this bike is truly right now bone stock. Like today, I finally got the bodywork on, and Reese Bridey from REB Graphics literally spent most of the day making it look as beautiful as it is. Um, but this bike motor wise is bone stock so you know one of the beauties of riding the bike is that they've got a ton of horsepower um, i've had a number of these since they came out uh, i had them in 2016 i got another one in 2018 and another one in 2019 and i've had a 2021 so a, a number of these motorcycles um, i've built the engines on a few but more recently my 2021 is just stock uh, my my previous gen bike, uh, we did a head gasket in it to give it a little bit more compression and a little bit more power. Was that necessary at Loudon? No. Uh, some of the bigger tracks, you know, you'll always take a little bit extra horsepower if you can. Um, we've just got a Hindle exhaust on it. Uh, we put a special air filter in it that, that increases airflow a whole bunch. Um, I changed the velocity stacks a little bit that kind of smooths the power out down bottom, gives it a little bit more linear delivery. Um, and other than that, it's just, you know, cam timing and, and that kind of stuff. They're, they're really basic. Again, my 2021 is completely stock uh, as it came um, outside of the intake and, and the air filter stuff. Yeah, so I think the, uh, the electronics is one of the coolest features on the, the ZX-10R. You know, I'm a bit of a geek. I'm an engineer by trade, so um, I generally do a lot of the electronics and all the data acquisition stuff uh, for the team. Um, and, you know, we, after each session, um, we can pull data from the bikes and analyze things. So Scotty and I will come in from a session, you know, I'll pull both, both the data sets from each bike. Um, we'll review it, you know, we look at different areas, you know, where he's faster, where I'm faster, and you know, help each other out. And, you know, getting all that feedback from the electronics, you know, the ECU's talking to it, we put some extra sensors on the bike, you know, brake pressure sensors, potentiometers and stuff like that. Um, and you can really tell what's going on you know every inch of this track so and to me you know you know a lot of people will put a gps lap timer on it and they don't really pull the data and analyze things and that's the most important part of the data acquisition system is really analyzing that data and getting that feedback and seeing exactly what's going on at every inch of the track and that's where you can really make some improvements um as far as suspension and chassis stuff uh, by far the most important thing on, on one of these motorcycles because chassis setup really matters. You know, when you don't have, when you're riding a bike that has, let's say, a Ninja 400 that's got 40 or 50 horsepower, you can be off a little bit in your suspension. It's not going to make that big a difference. As you get more and more horsepower, it's more and more important to be correct. And these bikes have an enormous amount of options uh, from Kawasaki. Uh, I mean, you know go backwards you start by putting on forks and shock stuff you know i've got a, a penske triple adjustable shock that is valved to a special spec that uh that i like that works really well uh, and that's been proven for a long time i've been back and forth between different suspension linkages i've 
played with aftermarket ones. I've played with stock ones. I'm on a stock one right now. We may go back and try it again. Um, sometimes you'll try a more linear rate so you won't get as much of a rise. So what happens is if you get into too deep in the stroke, um, you'll get too much force to the tire too quick. It'll stop squatting and just spin the tire or pick the bike up and wheelie one way or the other, depending on how the rest of your chassis is set up. Um, you can play with swing arm pivots and, and that kind of stuff uh, where you change the height of the swing arm pivot, which has a very large effect on the way your suspension works and your chain pull moments and all that kind of physics if you're into that kind of thing. Um, Kawasaki even has inserts you can put in the steering head where you can change the steering angle and the, triple, and the offsets back and forth, not triple clamp offset, but the actual offset of the steering axis in the chassis. Um, and we found some settings that we really like there. There's a lot of stuff you can play with. Um, with that said, the way this bike comes from the factory, you know, it, it's really good. You can get on it and just ride it and go pretty fast with all the stock setup. Uh, I'm a tinkerer. I'm an engineer. I like playing with that stuff. And, uh, you know, sometimes I even find ways to make it make me go faster. Other times I just, you know, get practice spinning wrenches and, and trying stuff and educate myself in the process. Yeah, so the adjustability on the electronics is almost infinite and you can absolutely get yourself lost and uh, kind of get yourself spun up. Um, but it's also one of the coolest things about these bikes and all of the uh, 1000s is that we have the ability to make these changes. All of these bikes are all fly by wire. Um, and one of the awesome things about that is we can change how much throttle is actually opening based on gear and RPM and where we actually have our throttle percentage. That's, you know, that's one of the coolest things that you can actually tame a bike down for tracks and for specific corners because you know that you're in a certain gear at a certain throttle percentage. Um, and you know, it's one of the things that, yes, it's absolutely overwhelming when you first like look at it and you first start to uh, uh, tinker with it, but it's so cool just to see all of the changes that we can make and how they really do effectively make a difference and make you a faster and better rider. Yeah, so as far as geometry and setup, um, we have been playing around with a, a program called Motospec that kind of, you know, helps you. It, it may not be the most accurate software, perhaps, but it, it, it lets you know ahead of time if you tweak this, if you change, you know, the rear ride height a little bit, what it does to the front end, or vice versa, if you change, the, change your front end, if you drop the forks down, it lets you know, like, what happens to your swing arm, swing arm angle and stuff like that. So, you know, I feel like I got my bike very well dialed in for this track. Um, you know, we went down to New Jersey earlier this month and it actually, you know, I didn't, I didn't make much for changes down there either. So, you know, it was pretty much plug and play down there. Did a little bit of a gearing change, but that's it. Uh, to be honest, a ZX-10 totally stock bike is a great track day bike just as it is. It has good suspension. It has some adjustability to the stock electronics and so for your regular street rider and someone wanting to go to the track, it's a fantastic bike right out of the box. Uh, for somebody that wants a little bit more out of it, thinking about racing or getting a little bit more serious in track days, um, to be honest, you can leave the stock electronics for a long time. Uh, they do work really, really well. Um, updating the suspension a little bit, putting a little bit stronger set of brakes on it um, are all things that'll help. Um, and then, you know, exhaust, free up some flow, uh, and uh, you know things like that to make them run a little bit better, um, but uh, they're they're great great bikes just right out of the gate. Hundred percent, the first change you put on any bike is tires. Like that is your entire connection for everything else you do, from horsepower to suspension to everything else. It, it all gets transmitted to the racetrack through the tires, and so. If I was going to do track days in this bike, without a doubt, I'd put on Dunlop Q4s. I mean, they are a fantastic tire. They have a ton of grip, lots of feel, um, and they're street legal, so you can still ride them on the road. Uh, if you want to ride something that is even good in the rain at the same time, you go to the Q3 Plus, kind of same kind of deal. And, you know, one of those two tires, great choice. I would say the Q4 is probably a second faster than the Q3 Plus, but the Q3 Plus has the, the, uh, flexibility to be used in wet conditions better. Not that you can't use a Q4 on the wet, but a Q3 is gonna be a better tire. And it, that's without a doubt the very first thing I would do. If you were asking me for any bike, I would have something specific. Um, this bike here, if they had this exact bike as a, they came off the street and they wanted to do a track day 
and they enjoyed it so much, if they were just going to do the track day that day, then I would say do nothing. Um, change your modes, mess with the modes, like within its natural settings that comes street. If you were going to take a street ZX10 after doing a track day and fell in love with it and wanted to become um, a racer to better yourself as a rider or whatever the circumstances, the first thing I would do is probably suspension. Yeah, rely on the bike, but then suspension and keeps you planted. Um, I would say probably suspension stuff, although I take that back, I guess, you know, that my B bike was actually a street bike. And um, when I started building that, I left the front forks on it and the front forks on these things were actually pretty capable. I did change the rear shock. So I guess the very first thing would be a rear shock, but the, the forks are actually not that bad, you know, from, from, uh, the OEM, from an OEM standpoint. Uh, uh, some people that I really would love to thank uh, that have really kind of gotten me to where I am is uh, one, my shop, Sauhegan Valley Motorsports. Um, without the shop, without the people at the shop helping and supporting, without everybody that's been involved in our race program and uh, our race division um, through the store, uh, we wouldn't be where we are. Um, Spears Enterprises, uh, Greg Spears has been a huge um, contributor to our race program ever since the beginning when we started. Um, he's a great friend, he's been a mentor, he's helped me through uh, kind of getting through some of the tough stuff with business and then also with building uh, our race department. Um, Pirelli Tires, Kindle Exhaust, Woodcraft, um, Lenny Albin, um, who else we have, Spectro Oils. Um, the list goes on and on. I've been doing this for a long, long time, and there's been a lot of people, even if they're not current supporters of our race program, there's so many people that have been involved in kind of getting us to where we are now and getting the, um, our, our race team built kind of the way it is. And then, uh, obviously, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without the help and support of my wife and my kids. They're huge. Uh, um, they have a huge involvement in making all of this happen and being here at the track every weekend and enjoying being here. You know, without them, none of this would be possible either. Yeah, my mom and my dad have also been huge uh, in um, getting me uh, to this point as well. You know, they were there. They were there to support me as well as my uncle Victor um, with bike and tools and support and tires from the very, very, very beginning of my racing career. Um, and without them allowing me to do this, you know, none of this would be possible either. Yeah, so as far as sponsors go, my main sponsor is Sauhegan Valley Motorsports. Um, you know, I've been working with them for a lot of years now. I uh, started working with Scott uh, back when I was racing an SV650. You know, the first time I blew an engine in it, you know, took it over to SVM. He helped me out, put a new engine in it, and we've been working, working together ever since. Um, secondly, uh, Pirelli Tires, uh, Mike Kurtz over at MTAC Pirelli. Uh, He's been tremendous over the years. Uh, you know, I started, I was originally a Dunlop rider and then switched over to Pirelli uh, probably four or five years ago. And I've just absolutely loved the tire. It just, it just fitted me very well. And, um, you know, every track that I go to on them, it's just, I'm amazed by the grip that they have. Um, Woodcraft, uh, you know, been working with them for a long time as well. Um, you know, they've, you know, it's amazing how quickly they can get me parts every time I, you know, unfortunately, you know, had a crash, you know, literally like the next day they got parts into me. So they've been great. Um, and then Vortex, uh, Galfer, they they had some other sponsors that I have. So that's it. The people that keep me racing, honestly, um, is my, f my father. Um, my, f my father is by far the biggest fan and probably the biggest sponsor I have. Um, my wife is 100% dedicated to um, being a huge supporter. She's actually probably the to be blamed why I got into this sport um, for getting me my first track day for a birthday present. So um, it'd be uh, Sahin Valley Motorsports, Scott Mullins for never-ending support. Um, the track family, I mean, everybody here is fantastic. Um, 
you know, we can go all winter long and not see anybody or talk to anybody. And then you come back to this track and the people here are really, within itself, your own sponsors because they're here to help you if you actually need anything. So, um, and then of course I have Pirelli tires, which is new for me this year and they're phenomenal. So thank you, Mike. I'll start with the people that, uh, that keep me safe. Um, you know, I've been with Vance and Leathers forever. Um, they make a fantastic suit that is um, by far the most durable uh, suit you'll find on the market. You can always kind of be in protection with those things and you can crash multiple times in the same suit. It's certainly not a, a one and done kind of blow it out and they're made in the US and that kind of stuff by a local company for us. So 100% uh, support there. Um, I also am fortunate to wear the best helmets in the business. Uh, Arai does really, really good stuff uh, and I'm thankful to be supported by them. Um, you know, those two things, you know, keep me safe and keep my head, which is, which is, which is really important. Um, Dunlop Tires is a huge supporter of mine. Uh, I have been with Dunlop, I think, since 1994, long time, uh, and have been a key part of my professional career way back when and, and still support myself and the school to this day. So um, huge thanks to those guys. Uh, Maxima Oils kind of fall in the same category. Uh, top quality company with really, really good people that make some fantastic product and are enthusiastic about what they do. Um, Penske Shocks, uh, guys I've been with for a long time, uh, been helping me win championships forever. Um, K-Tech Front Forks, uh, those guys helped me out. And, and Peter from GMD CompuTrack Boston is kind of the glue that holds all that stuff together. You know, we've been working with those suspension companies and Peter and I have worked together for years to, to tune those things and, and he's been a massive help to my program um, for years. Um, as you know, I make a lot of my own products, so I kind of sponsor myself for a lot of this stuff. Um, and I'm grateful for all the people that, that patronize uh, Woodcraft and buy, you know, Hindle exhaust and, um, you know, support all our armor bodies and that kind of stuff, product lines. Uh, that's, that's obviously a, a huge help to me. Um, you know, Miles from Street and Comp has helped me for, for a long time. Um, let me see, who else have we got on there? I mean, you know, my business partner, John, first, uh, first tracks his ski shop, like, you know, like we, we consider that a part of a part of an important part of our program. Um, you know, lately, uh, uh, kind of new guys on the on the blocks, uh, Innovative Motorsports uh, and uh, Reese at REB. Um, those guys help with some basic fab fabrication stuff and Reese does really good paint and vinyl work. I mean, you've probably noticed the, the level of the look of the riders around the paddock at, at Neymar and, and the guys are, I mean, and he's doing some national level guys too. Really, really good stuff there. Um, and, you know, you guys from like Zero Gravity, um, you know, help, help me out with, with windscreens and that kind of stuff. And I, I don't know who else I'm forgetting. I'm gonna feel bad if I wanna, wanna get this all together. Rob from Rob's Dino um, helps that stuff. Um, not being a, an official sponsor, but I get my bikes from Sauhegan Valley Motorsports, and they're really good people, and I, and I, and I like to promote those guys. Um, and uh, you know, anyone that I'm forgetting, I, I apologize. You know, it's like we've been we've been doing this for a long time. We've got a lot of really good people behind us, and, uh, and I'm I'm grateful for for their support. <laughs> I like green. <laughs> <laughs>